Hi everybody. The purpose of this lecture is to go over some of the common terms we'll encounter when we're building a house, some of the materials we're going to use. Um, it feeds into a couple of the course learning outcomes that we have. One of them is defined terms in residential construction and so we need to be accurate when we're talking about something. When, if, if I tell you to plumb the wall, that's different than if I tell you to level the wall or square the wall. So there's a, there's a couple different things going on. We need to be able to like use these terms and be on the same page. And another one is communicating with our coworkers and the general public. And so I want everybody when they're done with this to be able to go on to any job site and be able to communicate with people, tell them what you need, tell them what you're looking at, describe what you're trying to do, understand when somebody's telling you what to do. Okay, we don't want to be in a situation where you're asking somebody, where is the thingy that goes in the thingamajig so I can put it on the doohickey, okay? We, we have to know um, what things are called and we have to be able to describe things to people, okay? So I'd like to start out just by kind of highlighting this first sentence. Building a home is not difficult, okay, after you've done it a few times. When we break it into different components and we understand what those components are, how they fit together, and then really importantly, we understand the sequence of things that goes into building a house, okay? We call that the critical path, and we, when we understand what needs to happen before the next step can happen, we're following the critical path, okay? We don't want to insulate and drywall a house before the roof goes on because it might rain and it might get the drywall and the insulation soaked and then we have to tear everything out, okay? So there's just things that are supposed to happen in a certain order, okay? Like I said before, we want to be able to define terms in residential construction. So we're going to define a lot of things in this lecture. We have to speak the same language. And there are certainly regional differences in construction. Okay, Construction is very different worldwide. And it's even different within the United States. Okay? We call things different, different you know, on the West Coast versus the East Coast, North, South. We build differently because the climates are different, okay? So this is going to be pretty focused on like Pacific Northwest kind of stuff, but it's it's applicable for the most part. Um, we're going to talk about some different mathematical processes. The most important one that we're going to utilize is using the Pythagorean theorem. And so Hopefully you all remember that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's a really valuable tool for determining if something is square. We'll talk more about that. And then this is a little preview like coming ahead, but one of our learning outcomes is to interpret construction documents. And for the most part, that means being able to take a set of plans, construction documents, look at those plans, and then build a house from there, build whatever it is we're trying to build. Um, a lot of people, when they look at a set of plans, might not have any idea what they're looking at, but by the end of this class and after you've built the house, you'll be able to take a set of plans and turn it into a building. Okay, all the, all the information we need is in that set of plans. Okay. All right, so the first, first thing I wanna go over is kind of the difference between plum, level, and square. And a lot of people are gonna use those interchangeably like mistakenly, okay? They just, they know what the, they know the words, but they're not applying them correctly. So I want us to address these and be able to apply them correctly. So when we say something is plumb, that means it is exactly vertical, okay? I think it's from the Latin word for lead, plumbum, okay? And from that, we also get the term plumbing, but they would run water pipes straight up and down, okay? Um, I th I'm pretty sure that's where we get plumb. But anyway, it, it means something is exactly vertical. Okay, so when we stand up a wall, okay, we wanna make sure, 
or when we're building a fence, okay, we're putting in fence posts, we want to make sure the, the posts are plumb. We want to make sure they're exactly vertical. We don't want them to be crooked, okay? We're not necessarily building the fence level, okay? All right. There are quite a few ways to determine whether or not something is plumb. The classic way is to use a plumb bob, all right? And what a plumb bob is, is a heavy material, usually brass, suspended from a string. And it's so very simple, and it's always accurate, as long as the wind's not blowing. Okay, it doesn't work very well if the wind's blowing, but when we suspend a heavy object, a weighted object, from a string, gravity is going to hold that heavy plumb bob exactly vertical from wherever we're holding that string. Okay, so let's just say, for example, I'm trying to transfer a point on the floor to a point up on the ceiling. I'm going to lower that plumb bob down on that string, and I'll move, I'll move that string line around on the ceiling until this point on the plumb bob lines up with the point I'm trying to find. Okay, and then I can transfer this mark up to where that string line is. Okay. I don't see a lot of people using these as much anymore, which is unfortunate. I, th I think there's a huge reliance on the four foot level. Spirit level is, is kind of the, the general name of the tool. They certainly have their place for a lot of functions, but the beauty of the plumb bob is that it's always accurate. Plumb bobs never go out of whack. Whereas a spirit level, especially if you buy a cheap spirit level, um, will go out, will not be accurate. Okay, you drop it, somebody kicks it, um, it won't be accurate anymore. Okay, the plumb bob is so simple. Okay, like I said, it'll work just fine as long as the wind's not blowing. You can also, and, and one thing that I've actually ended up using quite a bit is a plumb bob, like a retractable plumb bob with an offset on it. Okay, and I'll, I'll have to bring it into class, into the carpentry lab and show everybody, but I have one that's, it's got a pin that you drive into the wall, and it's a little box, and then from the box, there's a reel and a plumb bob comes out. And so it's offset from the wall two inches. And so the beauty of that thing is, you know, we can only get a level that's so long, and if we're trying to plumb up a wall, made out of wood, it's not necessarily going to be straight. But that plumb bob is going to be, as long as you measure the string, measure off the string, whatever that offset is, you can determine if it's exactly plumb. So for example, that tool I have that I was talking about has a two inch offset. So if I measure at the top and it's two inches from the wall to the string line, and then I measure at the bottom, and the plumb bob is an inch and a half from the wall, the string about right above that plumb bob is an inch and a half from the wall, the wall at the bottom is too close to the plumb bob. Okay, it's not plumb. If it was two inches at the top and two inches at the bottom, that wall would be suspended exactly vertical as well. Okay. One thing that people are really getting into, and I've used a lot myself that I really enjoy, are laser plumb bobs. Okay, more specific than just a plumb bob, they can shoot a plumb line on the wall, they can also shoot a level line, they can shoot square lines, and they can shoot a plumb dot. So if I'm trying to sh find a point from the floor up to the ceiling, that little laser can shoot a dot exactly plumb from the floor up onto the ceiling. Okay, you can also shoot a plumb line. If I'm trying to have a whole line, like setting a course of tile or something like that. Okay. Um, in the carpentry lab, we'll play around with lots of different ways to find plumb. But suffice it to say, there's lots of different ways. Sometimes certain situations call for a particular tool. Okay. But plumb, remember, means exactly vertical. Okay. If I say something's level, that means it's exactly horizontal, okay? It's 
and it's parallel to the horizon, okay? Water is always level, all right? A lot of people used to use a tool called a water level, which I'm not really gonna get into right now, but um, they built the pyramids using the principle that water will always seek its own level and the pyramids are within like a half inch. Okay, so they're pretty, they're pretty accurate. But two of the most common tools we're gonna to use, and I don't have a picture of the third one, but one really common tool that I think is kind of going by the wayside now, and actually I'm getting away from it in the carpentry lab also, is the automatic level or the builder's level. And what that is, is a scope. And it's a scope that sits on top of a tripod. And when you level this scope, you should be able to swing that thing around and you'll be able to find a 360 degree level plane, okay? We'll talk more about how that works, the principles of that when we get into like building layout and setting of a foundation, okay? But that is a tool that people utilize to find level. More and more what people are using for kind of bigger scale leveling projects is a laser level, a rotary laser to be more specific. It's a, it's a laser that mounts on a tripod and spins around and shoots a little laser all the way around. And there's a receiver that picks up that laser and you can set that receiver to a certain height and then you can transfer that point somewhere else. Okay, so you're transferring a point around and you can maintain, again, a 360 degree level plane, all right? The spirit level is a box. They used to be made out of wood. Um, more commonly now they're made out of aluminum. But it's, it's a beam that holds a tiny little vial that's filled with liquid that has a bubble in that liquid. And there's usually some lines on the vial. And so when the bubble is exactly centered between those two lines on a level, we've probably all used a level, that's one way to determine if something is level or not, okay? They're called spirit levels because they used to, the liquid that was in those vials used to be alcohol because alcohol wouldn't freeze. Okay, if you put water in a level and then took it outside on a cold day, it would freeze and blow the glass up and your level would be ruined, okay? So, the thing to remember about these, and I alluded to this a little bit before, is they can go out of accurate, okay? It is a vial su suspended in that frame, okay? So the level is only good as the vial is parallel to that frame. If that vial is out of parallel with that frame, it doesn't matter where that frame is, it's not going to read the same as what's happening in that vial, okay? And so the way to check to see if a level is accurate, a spirit level is accurate, is you take the spirit level and you place it on a surface, okay? It should be close to, le it should be slightly out of level, slightly out of level, okay? So let's say you place a spirit level on a surface and the bubble kind of pings to one side. Rotate the level 180 degrees and set it on that surface again. And if the bubble pings in the same direction, it's not supposed to be level because the surface is at a level. But if, if it's going in the same direction, then your level is accurate. Okay? If it pings in the opposite direction, then your vial is not parallel to your frame. Okay? And the, you, it's essentially a piece of garbage at that point unless you've bought a really nice level, in which case you can send it back to the factory and they'll fix it for you, okay? You can make, you can do the same test with a level on a plumb surface, okay? Put the spirit level up against a wall, the bubble should go in one direction or the other, flip it around 180 degrees, and it should give you the same reading. If the bubble's going in the opposite direction as when it was this way, then the level's no good anymore. 